Well, hello, friends, and welcome to this edition of Life Talk. This is episode number 15. And first of all, I want to thank you for the support that you have shown through the previous 14 programs. This is something that God laid on my heart. We're live every Thursday, and each one of my guests is different and unique. And that makes each program very special to me. If you've never seen Live Talk, Live Talk before, this is what we talk about, the issues of life. We talk about our Christian faith. We talk about our callings and the commitments that we have and the careers that God has given us. And so I, you must recognize this lady that's with me now. This is my first repeat guest. This is the one and only Peggy Blue with me. Hey, Miss Peggy, how are you? Hello, 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 and hello, everyone. Welcome back to Life Talk. And thank you for inviting me. It's an honor. Well, you know what? This is a double blessing for me because it's this is going out live May 12th. It's my birthday today. Yes. And I've got an amazing guest, my dear friend, joining us from LA today, Peggy Blue. So Peggy, how's the weather out there? It looks pretty sunny from where you're sitting. It is going to be, it's not quite 82, but it's on its way. Hmm. It's going to be 82 today. And that's not, you know, by the weekend, they said 97, 98. Yeah. So. <laughs> I, I'm, you know, obviously on these programs, nothing is scripted. We just talk. We let the Holy Spirit guide each one of these conversations. Yes. But I, I want to start, you know, what was life like? Little Peggy Blue growing up. Do you have a, a childhood memory, a favorite one or two that you would want to share with us? I do. I, my favorite memory. <laughs> And this is going to be a repeat of what I said probably before. My favorite, one of my favorite memories is being placed on the dining room table of the mayor of the town that I was raised, uh, born in, North Carolina. And because he had won the mayoral ship and my grandfather, who was his friend, and my uncle, who and they were both bishops, they said, you got to let Peggy Ann come and sing when the role is called up yonder. And that's what I sang. So I remember being placed on the dining room table. And what is really funny to me is that my father and my mother was at one end, my grandfather and my grandmother at the other end, my uncles. And, they, and because they knew, they said, somebody be there to catch her because she's going to jump off the table <laughs> when she sees people in the back of the room yeah. that she wants to get to. I was three years old. <laughs> and they, <laughs> so I do remember that. And I do remember that I did jump off the table <laughs> and run down the hall. And that built that the, 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 the house that this was in is still there. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I also remember singing in the school choir. Mm -hmm. I was a soloist in the school choir. There's, there's, my memories go, they can go I don't remember my father going down to the Lumber River to catch fish and they wouldn't come home and cook it right outside the yard. Wow. And they wouldn't let me outside. They'd go stay in there because you'll want to try to do it and you'll get burned. So stay in there and look out the window. <laughs> and I'd be looking out the window crying, going, why won't they let me go? <laughs> <laughs> do you, uh, you ever get back home much? I don't get as much as I want to, and especially now since this crazy pandemic. Yeah. I don't get there as much as as I used to. You know, I used to go and for my family reunion, but I haven't been able to go and they've not had it for a couple of years. This is going on three years now, but I think they're going to have it this year. You, you know, you mentioned the pandemic and that, that affected so many people in so many ways. How did it how did it affect your career and the projects you had? Must Everything must have ground to a halt. Shut it down. Shut it down. Shut it down. And it and I, there's still rooms like like I'm used to going to Europe working. Haven't been there. The, everything got called off. Mm. New York, everything got called off everywhere and so even here there are a couple of places that we do here that reopened and we've been doing benefits because to feed the children um and the homeless we i mean i've done that and i just won oh you didn't see that and i'm i didn't bring it it's uh, an award a, the a legendary music award that i got presented with 
that I was getting ready to walk off the stage after I finished singing. Oh. And the man said, the producer of the show said, wait, wait, don't leave yet. And I said, why? And he walked on stage and the whole audience started applauding and standing because wow. for some reason they knew. And he presented me with that. That made me feel so grateful yeah. and that I could pay it forward for somebody. Yeah. You know. That's got to be a very humbling experience when you when you're recognized by your peers. Yes. Uh, and yes. And he just told me yesterday that he's going to, I don't know how he thinks he's going to get in, but I'm going to call my doctor when after the this interview and ask if he, his name is Keith, and because he said, I'm coming to that hospital because I want to be there for support for you and your son. And I was like, they're not going to let you in. And he <laughs> said, oh, they'll let me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, thank you, Peggy, for bringing that up. And this is a probably a good opportunity. Uh, to, to segue into this. You have a procedure coming up next week. Oh, yes, on the 18th. Yeah, can you tell us a little bit about that? And for, and for those of you who are watching, and I know Crystal and I are gonna be, we're gonna be reaching out and praying, pray for Ms. Peggy's uh, surgery next week. But can you explain to us what's happening next week with you? I have, the, my doctor found a hole in my heart. And he said, we need to, clear that up and at first they wanted to cut me and then one of my other doctors said no don't let them cut you this is the the, the other doctor knows me from church mm -hmm. um thank god and he said no ask them if they can do this and when he said that my heart specialist looked at me and said how do you know about that i was like well you'd be surprised at the things I know and that, you know, but he asked me and they said, yeah, but he had to get a wait until the doctor was able. And I think they're going to go in through, I don't know if it's my nostrils or my, my throat. I don't know, but I know that they're not going to put a, a cut, but he did say to me, if you don't get the operation, it could kill you. Oh. And if they don't do it right, it could kill you too. Oh, and yeah, he did. And I said, well, I'm going to put that in God's hands. Yeah, amen. amen. Because I'm not, I can't do anything about that yeah. except try to save my life so I can get my life back and get back to work. This is all because of stress from over 40 years of being with somebody and hiding the treatment that I was getting, you know. Yeah, and that's, that's another thing. We were talking pre-show about mm -hmm. this and I, I only want my guests to talk about what they're comfortable talking about and then I have a story afterwards that something uh, that I'll try to relate to uh, being revealing and, and sharing things about yourself but you were in an abusive relationship for a while oh yeah you suffered a lot of trauma a lot yeah can you talk at all about that and, and maybe help us understand maybe some of the warning signs, some of the red flags that happen? That, that, that person wouldn't have a name if it wasn't for me because I, he's talented and I knew that, and, but no one else knew and they didn't care. And I said, but I do. And we were, I was the crystal at that time. The do run, 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 the do run, a crystal. Right. And we needed a guitar player. And at the audition, our manager and the head honcho at the crystal didn't, they did not want him. Plays too loud and too fast. And I said, that's, it. that's what they said. And, and that was true, but I knew that I could fix that you know. And I said to them, Louise, the other girl who was a crystal with me, I said, we will fix it. And we will do this, the music along with it and teach him where not to. But it played loud over the singers because, you know, you want to make sure you're heard. Sure. And even though you have an electric instrument and we don't, <laughs> you know, Yeah, I, but, I do know. Oh, baby, we did it and he got the job. And I mean, on and on and on. But even 
even then it was not good emotionally, you know, because when somebody has, I don't know, when they want to make sure that you hear me, if I was singing with you and I sang louder than you and didn't blend and didn't mesh, that would mean that I was selfish and just a horrifying talent. So that's what it was. But that and I mean, even when I realized I thought I couldn't have any more children and the doctor had said that come off the birth control because, you know, you're not going to get pregnant again. And so I was like, okay, no problem. When I did, I was asked to abort that baby. Mm. And I was like, oh, yeah. And I was like, I don't kill people, especially when they belong to me. And I wasn't trying to be, you know, and a girlfriend of mine overheard that and turned and said to him, you say that one more time. And I will, I'm not going to say the, the bad words she said. I understand. But she meant it. And I know she meant it. I had my baby. We both died, stopped breathing. But I saw my grandmother go, go back. She, and because God is not finished with you yet. And all of a sudden I hear the doctors go, because here's why I stopped breathing. My blood type, they didn't have anything in that hospital to give me mm -hmm. until they called Europe and got something to mix in to make it work. Wow. And they gave me that blood and I started, I came back. Mm -hmm. And when I saw my grandmother come go back, Mumsy, because God is not finished. All of a sudden the, the doctor who was behind me go, oh, she's breathing. <laughs> she's breathing. And do you know that they still, well, that particular doctor has passed away many years ago because my son next month will be 35, 36. But um, they said, she's breathing. And when I came back into my senses, doctor walked around and looked me dead in my eyes and said, we thought we lost you, but God sent you back. I didn't know that the doctor even knew about God. Yeah, amen, yeah. God sent you back. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, so it's when things go wrong in our life, and for, as for me, it's one thing to say, I love you. It's another thing to say, I'm in love with you. Those are two different things. Very true. Yeah. To be in love with somebody, yeah. completely different. And that's the only person in my entire 300 year life that I can say I've been in love with. Mm. And that's the reason I have this heart problem. There was nothing wrong with my heart. So it came as a result of stress? Yeah, and, and, and raw, to horrifying treatment. Horrifying treatment. And, and the result of knowing that he was cheating because I called the hotel room. We were both on the road and I called and a woman answered his phone. She was in his bed. Mm -hmm. And I found who she was at the union. She told me her name. So I called the union and found out who it was. You know, and I was like, he didn't tell you. Why would you? And why would you pick up his phone? Yeah. That and methamphetamine that I know nothing of because I don't. I'm not. I don't drink and I don't smoke and I don't do drugs and I don't. Um. I go to work. I take care of my home. I take care of my family, and took definitely good care of him. I had his clothes made, not bought off of it. I'm talking made. Mm -hmm. Shoes made. Dallas, Texas, and sent to wherever we lived. And I'm not gonna, I'm just gonna say women and men, because sometimes men go through it too. Oh yes. Because women are not perfect. Mm -hmm. And if you are not somebody who the other person is madly in love with, you're wrong and you're doing it wrong. Yeah. You know, so I got abandoned and I wasn't even home. I came home to find out everything that I had bought and all the studio equipment that I had bought. A few things we bought together, but we bought it together because we worked together in the, re in the recording studio. And I was a vocal coach. It was empty. So that 
you know that that uh, what are the what are the warning signs? What are the warning signs? I mean, the, depression what? and stress. Mm -hmm. You know the you mean the warning signs of that you're in an abusive relationship. Other than the obvious one that you know he's choking me and he's throwing me against the wall. There's a lot of subtle ones in there too. Verbal abuse. Um, well, and that's what it was. It was ver verbal abuse. He didn't fight. And my first husband, who passed away, put his hand one Sunday. I sang at church, and the church went up. And he, when we got home, he choked me and told me if I could take your voice, I could control you. <laughs> oh my! Wow! And my throat swole. Yeah, it was huge. Yeah, and but and when my brother heard me on the phone, he called to check on me to just to say hello. Mm -hmm. I lived in Brooklyn, he lived in Manhattan. And when he heard me speak, he said, what is wrong? Do you have a cold? And I said, no. And he hung up the phone. And all of a sudden I look around and he's banging on my door, mm. on my apartment. He opened this door. And when he saw me, he was like, oh my God, who did it? Who did it? And, you know, but people, jealousy is, you know, the Bible says jealousy is as cruel as the grave. Jealousy is. Yes. Vicious. It's vicious. Yes. And they both want me dead because I'm in the way. Oh, in their mind. I'm not in the way in my mind. We, we do different things. Yeah. And all I wanted to do was together. That's it. Yeah. And now all of that is culminated into this procedure you have to have next week. All of that, yes, has caused the hole in my heart. So they're going to go and try to close it. And please, God, let me live through that. Yes. Well, we're, we'll definitely be praying for that. And of course, Crystal and I will be reaching out beforehand. Please is do. that next, next Thursday? Yes. Next Thursday. The, okay. The 18th. The 18th. We'll make sure. Yeah. That, and it's, it's what I wanted to share earlier, you know, uh, I had said when I introduced you, you were my first repeat guest, right, um, yeah. on, on the program. Uh, a couple of weeks back, I don't know if you saw it, but uh, I had a cancellation of the guest that was supposed to be on. So I went to Crystal and I said, uh, can you be on the show? Because I want to interview you some more. He was on the very first program. And I think it may have been episode 12 or 13. It's a couple episodes back. So she says, yes, I'll come on the show. And then at the last minute, she twisted around. And she says, I'm going to interview you. You're not going to. Interview oh, I anybody. love it. No, I didn't see that. Yeah, it's I'll send you the episode. So Please. we're talking for an hour. And here's what I was getting to that. I as as open as I seem, I'm actually an introvert and I <laughs> and I don't like sharing things about myself. I, I share it through, you know, preaching and teaching and music. But other than that, don't ask me. And I want to tell you, Peggy, that I was, and I've told Crystal this, I was very uncomfortable being the person being interviewed. <laughs> and, and so we went over, we've gotten some good comments about it. And people said, hey, Reverend Thomas, I didn't know that about you. Or I didn't know your history or, you know, but I was, I was actually out of sorts for a day or two after that. And I said to her, I said, I feel really strange. I feel like you ripped me open and everybody's oh, wow. inside. So the, I say that all to ask you uh, as, a, as a celebrity, as someone who's been in the entertainment business for a long time, are you comfortable doing things like this? Are you comfortable revealing yourself and, and sharing stuff? Or are you like, this is a difficult thing and um, I have to do it because I'm in the business? This, what I just did was, is very difficult because I'm very private. Mm -hmm. I love doing interviews about the business, about music, about my career. Yeah. Because that, my career to me is not something that is about me. It's about God's gift to me. Yes. Amen. Like I wasn't even on my bio. It says she came into the world singing. I wasn't even supposed to be here. When I got here, I popped out when the doctors had told my mother, oh, she's, you got a long time. She's not coming. I'm sorry. It's another ambulance. Okay. Um, she's not going to be here for a while. And the doctor turned around and 
put his hand on the doorknob to walk out. And I'm told I popped out in one complete. <laughs> so that to me is funny. And, and my grandmother said, you opened your eyes and took a breath and said, ha ha. And she said, oh, look to my mother. She's singing from birth. Yeah. That to me is a miracle. So I love to talk about that because God gave me that. Mm. Have nothing to do with me. Mm. But the the conversation that that I just had about m my life and my marriage and my all of that is depressing because it's personal and it's private, and I don't want to depress anybody else. Mm -hmm. especially these days when so much stuff is going on in our world and everybody is in danger. So you want to be as positive as possible. Well, I do. Yeah, that is, that is true. But at the same time, there's a lot of people out here that are hurting and going through a lot of things that maybe you and I have experienced. And if we can share that with someone, I mean, as a yeah. preacher, I can share the love of Jesus and I can share the gospel and I can share there's hope in Christ and, and those things. But sometimes you have to get right down to it and say, I know you're hurting and I know you're lonely and I know you feel abandoned and we have to meet people where they are. So I appreciate the fact that you opened up. But I just was wondering because you do a lot of interviews, obviously, you've been on television, on Broadway and all that. And so you're in demand. And I, I've, I've wondered this for a while, and I was hoping to get a chance to ask you, how is it when an interview says, hey, how are you? And they shove the mic in your face, and suddenly you have to be on. To me, it's like, that's nerve wracking, you know? Well, it, it depends on what you say. Yeah. And when you say it, and I'm, because I'm an actress, I'm able to go in between <laughs> <laughs> and say only what I want the public to know. And the other one, you you close your mouth, swallow. But the thing is, is that when you swallow it, it goes back into your heart. It <laughs> goes back into, yeah. And that causes depression and anxiety. I, I never, until I understood what my temperament was and being an introvert and being a melancholy as a, as a temperament. Yeah. Uh, I, I remember many times over the years, playing a concert, coming off stage, and just when the audience wants to interact with you or they want your autograph, that's the time I have to, it's too much stimulation for me. And there were times over the years that the, the band would say to me, look, you're supposed to come out with the rest of us. But <laughs> I would, you know, you know what I mean? You leave 120% of it on the stage. Yeah. And when you come off the stage, it's like, there's nothing left. And for me, it was overstimulation and I needed some quiet just at the time when, you know, they may want to take a picture with you. And that's something that I've always struggled with. When I preach, I preach 120% and then afterwards I feel completely empty. And when I walk off stage and if somebody wants me, that's what happened with this, this, this thing the other day. But, and that's like the fifth one, <laughs> you know, <laughs> but, but it, it makes you feel good. It makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. to be wanted amen uh, for somebody to care about me really care mm -hmm. that I, somebody who i don't even know i don't mm -hmm. i don't know you from a can of paint yeah but you want a picture with me yeah and you want my autograph on a piece of paper that you're going to keep that to me is a huge blessing mm -hmm. and it's my honor to say yes to somebody who because you you know they could be saying oh please <laughs> and leave me. instead they're saying may we have a picture may we have your autograph we love you thank you and that's what i'm used to getting when 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 i'm performing yeah for people and that's a blessing to me that humble spirit of yours comes through that if somebody would want to see you after the show and i you know i did it but it was it was uncomfortable just because of who i am you know yeah. um and so i'd rather you know i'm sitting here talking to you and i'm totally comfortable if you've reversed this on me and started saying okay thomas you start talking about yourself I, 
it's just the way I am. But I was wondering how, how you deal with it. But obviously you, you're a pro at it after and you're grateful. You're grateful for- I'm your- really grateful. I was getting at the car dealership, um, getting something repaired on my car. Mm-hmm. And I went into the office to pay. And do you know that the lady behind the desk called my name when she, when she, when she looked uh, on the receipt and saw my name, she looked up and ran to me with her arms open. And I was like, oh gosh, should I run out of here now? What is this? <laughs> <laughs> Turns out she knows me from church. Oh, wow. From, and from singing with Andre Crouch's choir mm-hmm. and singing, and she said, I saw you here and I saw you there and Miss Blue. I was like, oh my God. <laughs> you, I'm talking 15 miles from where I live. Wow. You yeah. know, yeah. I never expected that. Mm. And she wouldn't, she just held on and she wouldn't let me go. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I would have to think, Peggy, you get recognized a lot when you're out. Yeah, I do. Uh, I do. And, and so you, uh, you know, you hear of some, some celebrities that don't take my picture, um, don't ask my autograph. And then there's others like yourself that are, you're very grateful for your fans. I'm grateful. I absolutely am grateful because they could just bypass you, especially with the way the changes are in the industry today. Mm-hmm. And the people are much younger and not trained, mm. and but they're major. And I'm like, and they don't even know what not to put on their bodies and walk on stage. It's like, you don't know my, I was taught by my mother and my grandmother. They're both right there (laughs) looking at me. Um, It's important, just as important to know what not to do as it is to know what to do. (laughs) Amen to that. Oh yeah. Yeah. And especially if you're in the public, Mm -hmm. you you have to be really aware because you have to understand that somebody who's younger than you sitting outside watching you and wanting to be like you. So if you're entertaining somebody mm-hmm. and there's a, an 18 year old sitting up, put some clothes on mm. and men, please pull up your pants. There's a little thing called a belt, get one. <laughs> 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 If you can't buy it, go get a rope. <laughs> Listen up, everyone. <laughs> and pull those pants up and stop walking around looking like that because it's disrespectful. I don't care what color you are. I don't care how old you are. Pull them up. And stop it. Be respectful of you because even if you're not an entertainer, you're still God's gift to humanity. And it's true. And it's true. You're up before other people too. And yes. People, people are watching you. Yes. And if, if they emulate you and it's the wrong image. Right. Then you have more ugliness walking the street. Yeah. Yeah. Stop that, disrespecting yourself and others. No, I appreciate your values. I appreciate what you're, what you're saying. Uh, it, what, what, what's the reward you get of being a vocal coach and, and helping people out? What is it? And that's one question, what, what you get from it. And two, what is it you look for in, in a potential person that you say, hey, I, I see some raw talent there. I want to groom you. What are you, what are you looking for? The, oh, I'm looking for a person, a voice, and a talent mm-hmm. that is ready to go forth mm-hmm. and share with others. And I get what I get out of it is I help somebody to, I pay it forward for you. So I help, I'm the reason that I can help serve somebody. Well, it's not actually me, it's the God in me that can come and give you something that you can take forward and then you can teach somebody else later. Yeah. So it's a, it's it's a round and round, it's like a circle. It's like Billy Preston said, will it go around in circles? (laughs) <laughs> great song, great song. He was a wonderful artist. He was. He was a friend of mine. <laughs> we worked was, together. He was a believer, and he's probably he, pl- he's playing for Jesus now. 
right now. Yeah, we, <laughs> honey, we had the best time at McHale back in New York. Oh, my oh. goodness. Billy oh. Preston. I mean, is Billy there anybody? And I'll get to that in a little bit. But Billy Preston, wow. An incredible talent. Well, that song, Will It Go Around and Circle, that's what it means. Yeah. But make it go, make it circle. Yeah. Make it, and you can do that if you have something to help somebody else pay it forward. Be a giver, not just to take a gift. Speaking of Billy, did you, are you on any of his recordings? Were you able no. to record with him? No, no, I didn't do that. Right. But we, we did play together at the Apollo. <laughs> the legendary Apollo. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's so we, we know what kind of person you're looking for, you know, when it comes to coaching, what do you what do you get personally out of it? What does it do for you? The satisfaction of knowing that I've helped somebody else. Mm. That I've given something that somebody else can use and that I can help their light shine. Mm. That's important to me. Does to anyone... be a light for somebody else. Amen. Has anyone ever said to you after you, some of your critiques, I just hate you. I hate what you're saying. But later on, they thought about it and they came back and they said, you were right. All along. No, I've never heard that. That's good. Mm -mm. I'm glad. I, 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 I've heard I've, some of my students I've seen cry. And when I said to them, stop singing because you're flat, listen to the key and do it again. And one, of the, one little girl just broke down and cried. And then, and I walked over and hugged her and I said, stop crying and listen to the chords. Mm -hmm. The melody is right there in the chord. So if you want to be a singer, you should be willing to do what's necessary. Yeah. Otherwise, I don't know, go be a dressmaker or something. Yeah. But you know. Do you believe, do you believe someone should know how to read music? You don't have to. It's wonderful. Yeah. But if you don't, if you don't have that gift, but you can hear mm -hmm. and you can transpose and do all of that, then okay. Yeah. But if but if you want to work with an orchestra, baby, you better read. Oh yes. <laughs> well, I came I came up old school under my dad, and he oh, said no. you're going to learn. And all the years I was teaching music, I told my students, you, you got to learn. You got to learn. Uh, and Broadway, you got to learn. Oh, you, yeah. I, I, oh, oh, honey, the children look at you and go, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you better know how to sight read yeah right? baby. You have a good ear you gotta know how to sight read and you, you better learn music and, and, yo you gotta you know so go to school and learn what you do just pay attention and do what you do yeah i had a student years ago uh he was a guitar student of mine and mm -hmm. he was trying out for school orchestra he was the only guitar player and there was a really complicated piece, some jazz piece, you know, maybe an old Glenn Miller number, but mm -hmm. he came in and he dropped the, the sheet music in front of me and he was absolutely flabbergasted. He's like, what do I do with this? So I said, here's what we're going to do. You already know how to read music. We're going to break it down measure by measure by measure by measure. We're going to work on that. Guess what? About three weeks later, he had an audition. He aced it. I he love it. In the orchestra, you know, and, but there was a case where someone who was willing to take instruction yeah. And understood that I need to learn to read this and phrase it properly or I don't have a chance to get in the band. And there, and there it is, the phrasing. Yeah. Because the phrasing of a song, just like the lyrics, tell the story of the song. Yes, they do. And they paint the picture. And if you're not willing to learn how to paint that picture, you don't, you don't have to sing it exactly like it's on the paper because yeah. it has to come through you to us. Mm -hmm. you know and so but you better be willing to know and 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 willing to speak i get oh god that worries me so much to listen to the radio sometimes to hear people i'm going what did you say it's not that it's that there's I, a th in the middle of it speak it <laughs> oh uh i i i probably already know the answer to this you must really despise auto tune. No, I don't. Okay. I don't. If it helps, no, I don't. Okay. I don't. I don't despise it, but I would rather not have to. Rather not have it. <laughs> okay. You know, and I agree with you on that. Uh, yeah. It's necessary, but doesn't it? Can it be too much of a crutch where you know some of you just can't hold a pitch? 
it's do, the machine is doing it for them. Well, if you can't hold the picture, you shouldn't be in the studio. First well, of all. There, with all there is that, yes. That's number one. Yeah. You know, there's a thing that's called rehearsal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. You know, learn learn what you came to do. Yeah. Because you're using time and you're wasting time. And no, I, I don't have time to waste. Yeah. Speaking of time, are we okay on time still? I'm fine if, if you okay. are. Yeah, we're good. Is there anybody in the business that you've wanted to work with and you either haven't had the opportunity or maybe they've passed away and you just didn't get the chance to do that? Patty LaBelle. Really? I know her. She said to me, I'm, I, I don't know, no, but she met me in the airport with Luther, Luther Vandross, who was yeah. a dear, dear friend of mine. And he introduced us. And she said to me, I saw you on Star Search and I loved you and you are a winner. And I was like, I will be a winner when I sing for you. <laughs> <laughs> you well, you know, well know she's from my hometown, Philly. You know, she's a, yeah, she's, she's a Philly yeah. girl. So yeah, wow. She is. And I'd love to work with her. And Stephanie Mills, I have a duet with and I'd love to sing with her again. Mm. I don't care whether it's front ground or background. I don't care. I just love her. <laughs> and I were, love her her talent. You were on Broadway with her. Yeah, I was. Yeah. Yeah, in the Wiz. But I also was one of her backup singers on the road. Mm -hmm. And we have a duet together called His Name is Michael, talking about Michael Jackson. Nice. <laughs> on her Merciless album. Have I posted that yet? I don't think I have. I've been I've been going through all your solo tracks. By well, the way, I thank you so much for that. Oh, you don't have to thank me. It, it, you know, you've gained some fans in our church family too. I know oh. some folks have been reaching out to you, and uh, it's, yes. my, it's my pleasure to do that. You know, you were talking a few minutes ago, and I want to get to something else too. You, you were talking a few minutes ago about painting a picture, and you can paint it through music, you can paint it through vocals. One of the things I really admire about your vocal styling is you do paint a picture when you're singing a song. There's very few vocalists I found that can really actually bring you in. Karen Carpenter was one of them that just as oh, soon as yeah. you hear her sing, she just brings you into yeah, her song. Right. You're right. And you know she's singing from her soul. You're right. Karen Carpenter was certainly one. I put you in that category because when- Oh, wow. Sing, Me with Karen Carpenter? Yeah, so you can hear, I mean, you can oh. just hear the sincerity in your voice when you're singing and you're delivering those words, you can believe them. So, I, it's, yeah, I, I put you up there. It's not me, it's the God in me. No, I, I understand. It ain't my voice. It's your if, if the Lord doesn't, when I'm trying to sing, if I just think of something and try to go and do it, it doesn't work. Yeah. But if I listen and let it, and allow it to come through me to mm -hmm. you. Yeah, it's it's that it's that pure emotion. It's not it's not a performance. It's coming out of you. No. When you listen to Karen, when you listen to, to vocalists like that, like yourself, you just you hear the sincerity. Uh, Sinatra had it too. You could uh -huh. when he sang a lyric, you believed it. And that's why I have a show called Sinatra in Blue. Right. <laughs> and I got permission from from his daughter from Nancy yes I did yeah. to sing his music that show is awesome because what it sounds like because Reverend Thomas I'm a gospel singer okay yes so I don't care what I, and I sing everything yeah but no matter what I sing you hear that and when she heard me sing it she was like oh my god I've never heard that song and I said do you mind and she said please do it because it's a teaching method and I was like thank you and I think Peggy maybe that's part of what I'm hearing when I hear you I hear that gospel edge even when you're singing probably I hear that that gospel that under undertone right oh, there yeah. that's and all I that's do. what I'm hearing and that's what my ears gravitate to you know I want to I want to hear music about God and I love your gospel music I've got to find more of it to, to post more of it. I think I'm just about done with all your albums now at this point. I Probably. think I've gone through them all. But um, let me ask you this. I know, I know you're busy. What do you like to do to relax? Do you have hobbies? Do you have things you like to do when you just need to kind of wind down? Uh-huh. Watch TV. 
Okay. <laughs> That's okay. A particular kind of television you like? Uh, funny. Funny. And musical TV. Okay. But I love TM I love I love to watch the services on TV because of the music. Okay. Yeah. You know, and it feels it makes me feel good. And it keeps me relaxed and de-stresses me. Awesome. You know? Amen. Yeah. And I, in the morning, I wake up to Channel 11 on the news okay. and I watch that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I watch that. So but tell me. I'm not, I don't like, uh, there's not much, you know. You like, you like keeping busy. So you don't need a lot of downtime. You're not necessarily a reader or a... Uh... I'm, I used to, I used to read a lot and I still read because I read my Bible every day. Amen. But, Amen. oh yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. And I have, I still, because I have prayer time first thing in the morning mm -hmm. and that hand is going up toward that seven o'clock yeah. moment, <laughs> I'm having my prayer time and then I read my scripture mm -hmm. because, and I even have some, my scriptures on the wall. Mm -hmm. that I did and I'll pass by it during the day and I'll repeat it because you have to we have to stay adjusted to what God wants us to become yeah. it's not so much of what he wants us to be because we still grow yes and so if we keep growing we become something other than what you tomorrow will become will be something other than what we were today yeah, we're not finished yet until God says no, we're finished. We're not, we're not finished until God says we're finished. We're finished. Then we're finished. Then yeah. we're finished. Yeah. yeah. And I hope he's not ready for me to be finished yet. Well, we're gonna we're gonna pray. <laughs> we're gonna I pray want the, again. I mean, I want the devil to go, but I'm telling you, go back to hell and get in that hole and stay there. Because <laughs> I don't belong to you, I belong to God. Yeah. You know. You have any um is there any new recordings or any projects in the works that you could maybe give us a little preview about? Yeah, I was supposed to be finished with my next album, and but the pandemic shut it down. Sure, yeah. But I'm now working with another one of my clients, mm -hmm. and he wants to do a duet with me. Oh, wow. And I haven't told him yet that I have to go into the hospital. But he's, he was a student of mine. This is somebody else that I paid it forward for. And because he never, the first and only time he's ever performed, I got him booked. And I did the arrangement and sang all the parts on his album and um, got him booked more than once. And he said, please, please, will you sing with me? And I was like, Please, please, will you write something worth it? <laughs> <You know? laughs> and he hollered. He thinks he said, "You're my sister." I was like, "Okay, <laughs> I'm not going to argue with him because he's six nine. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's funny. He could pick me up like this and throw me over there. <laughs> so, <laughs> his That's name funny. is J.C. Gafford, and he's uh, also a school teacher. But he's we're working on something now to hopefully after this heart stupidity, I will have my voice back. And I think I've seen his posts. Uh, probably. So Thank you in there. Okay. Probably. Wow. Mm -hmm. well, new music on the way, hopefully. On the way. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is good. And I'm and I trust him. And I want, I want to sing. I don't, and it doesn't matter. I don't just sing gospel. Yeah. I sing everything. But when I do sing, if it's the blues. You hear gospel in it. <laughs> oh, oh yes, I. If it's jazz, you hear gospel in it. Absolutely. Because that's who I am. Yeah. How many yeah. octave voice do you have? You got to have at least about four, don't you? Oh, um, maybe. Yeah. Uh, yeah. At it least. sounds it from when I listen to your range. I don't know if you can hit a full five, but you definitely. I have... don't know. I had five. I don't know what I have now. Mm -hmm. I. I don't even know. I don't even deal with that. It's I right. got told what I had when I was in on Broadway and studying with the vocal coach there mm -hmm. and he he looked at me his name was Kamal Scott he looked at me and said your, your range is you have five octaves mm. and I was like I do <laughs> I didn't know 
I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't care. Just tell me where you want me to go. I know that I don't sing where most women sing. My 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 keys are male keys because that's where my my vocals are, are reached. So I'm an A flat, B flat, E flat. You know, a lot of women sing G and F and whatever. That, don't give me that because I can't. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, <laughs> give me a B flat, an E flat, or an a, and I'm good. You know? It is obvious to me uh, and to those who are watching, those who know you, that you are a woman of God. You you have tremendous faith. Oh yes, uh, I do. You have spiritual discipline. You're reading your Bible every day. Oh, yeah. You're you you attend church. You've sung oh, yeah. gospel music. You give a testimony. You're you're a public personality, and you're a, you're not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You are not. No, I'm not. But I do want to ask you this uh, as we're winding down the interview. Can you t- share with us a time that your faith was tested? I mean, really tested, where maybe you thought that God had abandoned you or he didn't answer a prayer. What were, was there a time that you could share with us? you like, God. My marriage, you- my married life. Uh huh. All of that. I thought, God, you, I, why are you forgetting me? And I'm, I, I still went to church and I still prayed and I still believed, but I still got treated like. Yeah. But. How, how did you I work just, through that? How did you work through that? You knew that God didn't abandon you, right? I mean. I know. Right. I know. And I thought, okay, I'm supposed to learn something from this and I will. What is it? I'm supposed to learn what not to do, who not to trust yeah. and who not to believe. Hmm. You see, and the Lord is going to repair all of that for me. And even at my age, um, it might might seem stupid to some people, but I want to have a relationship again. I do, because I'm overdue. And I want a real one. I want a real one. When somebody says, that they care about me and they want, I want that to be the truth. Yeah. Because it never was before. If they say they care about you and really mean it and show it. And really it mean it. it. Yeah. And show it. And not you. just you want to, you, you're going to say that to me so that you can use me. Yeah. To get what you want. Yeah. And then when you feel like you've got enough, you abandon me and throw me away after you've cut me into small pieces. We're supposed watch to be, me bleed, step over me, and keep walking. We're supposed to be selfless, not selfish. You're right. We're You're right. Give unto others. Do unto others. I mean, the As golden you have rule. Have them do unto you. If you don't have the golden rule to start with, right? What do you have? If, if you want people treating you a certain way, you treat them. You treat them a certain way. You treat them. You 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 have to be respectful. You have you to know, be respectful. It's, yeah. It's, it's a lot. And somebody said you should, I th- I'm th- thinking of writing a book. And I started it, believe mm-hmm. it or not. Okay. I started it and okay. it's, it's a lot. <laughs> it's, it's okay. It's okay. You've got a lot. <laughs> You've got a lot. Is this a, a autobiography? It, yeah, it's my life. So you're writing your life. Okay. My life story. Yeah. And, um, but it's uh, two sections. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, it has to go from my childhood um, up until whenever it's, it's finished. And I don't know what that's going to look like. Oh, absolutely. Well, I will pray that you, you're able to do that. And, uh, you know, as the Lord leads you, you know, to write it. Uh, and I look forward to reading it one day. Thank you. I really am. So you, you already have one, one copy sold. <laughs> no, yours is free. Oh, you're you're my brother. You get you can't, and I'm gonna send one, my sister one too, your oh, wife, you're so sweet. that you're not saying, wait, I'm not finished. Yeah, and, you, <laughs> let me have that. I'm not done reading chapter uh-huh. three. Stop. I will that. send her own and put a name <laughs> on it. <laughs> oh, you're very kind. Is there anything you'd like to say before we, we wrap up to those who are watching it? What whatever the Lord lays on your heart. I just want to say to the nation, whoever is listening, remember that God is our survivor. We have to trust him. We have to believe his word. 
we have to do everything, and I do mean everything we can do, to live in his word. Amen. He Amen. loves us, and we got to love him. You can't ask for something that you don't get. Could you, you don't want to receive something if you didn't give. Amen. You understand? Yeah. So give God your purpose for life because he gave you your life. He sure did. So turn it around and say, thank you, Jesus. Don't ever wake up. I ne The first thing I do when I open my eyes, thank you, Jesus. You let me open my eyes. And I, if I, when I'm speaking, because I learned to pray, and because people can hear me, but you know what I said? I'm not going to whisper it. I'm going to speak it out loud. Mm -hmm. I don't yell it because you don't have to. Yeah. But I mean what I say. And the Lord uses my voice and I want to give it back to him. Amen. So for everybody listening, know that you are a child of God. And if you're not saved, get saved. Oh, there, there's a there's a sermon right there. <laughs> there's a give sermon. God your life. Come, give come God back. Our church. Yes. Oh, definitely. If, if you're not saved, the Bible says today is still the day of salvation. It says That's now right. is the accepted time. That's right. Now, those of you who have been listening to me for years, I harp on the same thing, but it's true. Jesus yeah. is the way. Jesus is the way, the only way. That's it. And he said it. And it anchors some people, Miss Peggy. It, it, this is the way that you said the light. A lot of people don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that. Oh, I'm so sorry about that. And I know some people who go to church and pretend that they're serving God while they're smacking you down. Mm -mm. That's the other thing. Whoa. But if you're going to give God your heart and your life, do it the right way. Amen. Respect your brothers and your sisters and know that it doesn't matter where you came from. Mm -hmm. Because God is the God of all people. Amen. Amen. Everybody. And if, he loves us all. If someone wants to get in touch with you. Hello? Oh, my God. I just lost you. No, nope, we're good now. Oh, now you're good. Oh. Okay. If someone wants to do. <laughs> if, if they wanted to get in touch with you, what's the best way to reach out to you? Oh. Email. Okay. Number one, the number one. Number one. Peggy Blue, P E G G I B L U at gmail.com. Okay. So we're starting to have a little transmission problems here. So, so I think the interview is over. Yeah, I, I would say so. <laughs> I would say so. Well, it looks like that we're starting to have signal problems. Miss Peggy, okay. thank you for, for being here again. You're very gracious. That you, you are so awesome oh. and i just i'm i love you with my heart and my i just love you and i thank you and i can't wait to meet you and child when we sing together it's gonna be all over but to shout <laughs> <laughs> now i am looking forward to that me too and it will be it will be one of the great blessings of my life to just, and i want to get well because i'm supposed to be at my friend's church in in um on the east coast in Atlanta to do a gospel concert Ooh. for him. I met him on the cruise ship when I used to work. We used to work together on the ship. Uh -huh. And he's a comedian, but he's also a now he's a, a he's a minister. And he said, I want you to come. And I was like, yeah, tell it to the, the doctor who's getting ready to go down here and fix this hole. And I'll see you in September. <laughs> well, Crystal and I will be in touch with you before Thank next you. Thursday. We'll arrange a time. We're going to pray over Please. the situation when the three of us will pray together. So thank you again, Miss Peggy. I love you too. You're, you are awesome. God and I, I thank God for you and your testimony. Friends, thank, so thank you for joining us for Life Talk, episode 15, 15 episodes already. We thank Woo. you for your support and we give God all the glory. Join okay. me next Thursday for the, my next guest will be alive again next Thursday and every Thursday after that until God says something different. We're God is truly here. amazing. <laughs> Amen. Yes, he so, is. Thank you, folks. Enjoy the rest of your day. Miss Peggy, talk to you soon. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. Bye, everybody. Wow.